Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for a webinar today uh, that where we learn how uh, companies such as uh, Blue Air, which is a brand of Unilever, used AWS IoT and went from idea to product within a year. Myself, I'm Syed Rehan. I'm a global senior IoT specialist solution architect working with customers such as Blue Air uh, all across the globe. Um, <clears throat> and today we have we are joined by Johan. Yeah, thank you, Sead. My name is Johan Alvenberg. Uh, I'm the head of IoT at uh, Blue Air. So it's, um, I'm really happy to be here today and present to you about uh, what we have done and share some insights. So happy to be here. Awesome. Awesome. So let's look at the agenda which we're going to go through. So I'm going to basically go through in terms of how uh, other customers who are innovating and migrating to AWS IoT. Uh, we will look at some uh, customer use cases studies and their reference architectures. And after that, we will, I'll hand it over to Johan to learn their story, how they basically took the idea into a product, into a market within a year. Um, we will also hear from Johan his uh, technical challenges. He will also talk about the solution architecture, which they have adopted uh, and followed by the summary, and then we can uh, end the webinar. Um, so why invest in consumer uh, connected consumer products? So that's one of the first things I usually get asked when I sit down with CTOs uh, or business leaders asking me, um, what is it in there for us? I mean, Connected consumer devices are set to grow by 125 billion devices by 2030. Um, and the revenue of these connected products will significantly grow from 465 billion to 1.3 trillion. And this data, what we have over here, is actually from a source of Transformer Insight. So there's a huge potential, huge potential. I mean, just in 2019, 399.9 million devices connected to smart home devices were shipped in the United States alone. Imagine the whole world and the, the trajectory where we're seeing all these connected devices, where automation of IoT devices making our life easier. And while it's doing that, it is creating a huge potential and huge demand for you to innovate and reinvent your product sets and bring it to IoT where you can understand and innovate and bring new features and idea sets for your customers to leverage. So there are a lot of customers I usually speak with. Um, I have customers ranging from home automation where they're actually integrating Alexa with their fridge, with the TV, with the house lights, um, with their uh, um, um, vacuum cleaners. Um, and then we also have customers who are basically doing security and monitoring, which we'll hear a use case later on we'll talk about, where for example, a customer basically leaves the house, has a smartwatch, and he also have a connected door lock. The customer walks away, he says that the device detects that he has actually left the house, it picks up and automatically triggers a setting to say that, okay, the, the person has left the house, there is nobody in the house because we can detect it, and it will basically initiate the, the block for anybody to come in and break into the house. Now, what happens in from a security monitoring perspective, if there's any breach in the house, it will send a notification, inform the police and so on to get the quick attention uh, and inform the users, uh, the, the consumer and consumer to say that, okay, you know, there has been a breach in your house. And all of this is not possible without a connecting uh, IoT product. Um, we also have customers, which I usually deal with on a daily basis, who are actually using the leverage of AWS IoT to connect their networking products. And by using that, they're able to provide the speed and the power of the complete fiber automation to down to the users, consumers' houses, where they can could be a router which automatically detects the user is basically playing a, a game. So it basically switches the latency and jitters and so on and makes the different connection configurations for a, a, the router to connect to the end, uh, end telco uh, hubs. Um, then you also have energy management. This is this is the one where you know we are very huge on in terms of sustainability, where we have customers who are trying to uh, reinvent connected devices by making sure uh, electric connected car can basically get charged and obviously turn off and inform the user. Or when the, the home is basically uh, reached the ambient temperature without any human uh, interaction, it basically reached and turns off. Um, 
to make sure it's comfortable. Or if somebody comes into the house and they leaves the house, the house controls the management of this energy to say that, okay, there's unnecessary electronic devices which are running when the consumers are not in the house, then we can turn that off, saving the energy and creating sustainable environment for everybody. Um, then we also have customers which I deal with on a regular basis where we have health and wellness devices where a consumer connected devices can tell you how good your health is. You need to basically um, improve what level of improvement you can bring in. Uh, whether you had uh, a high blood pressure issue because while you were sleeping or so on. So all of these connected devices connected with the back end uh, systems of uh, hospitals and care providers who automatically have all this data available for for them to see how your health and wellness is doing and then subscribe to you a course of action for you to come back on the trajectory of a healthy path. So some of the customers who are already leveraging uh, AWS IoT, uh, you know, ranges from uh, Philips, iRobot, Belkin, Peloton, LG, and most importantly, the customer who is joining us to talk about their story is Blue Air, which is a Unilever brand. Um, so let's look at some of the case studies and reference architectures. Right in, a, in a, any environment, there is three tiers on a, of an IoT architecture. There's an edge tier, which is the end devices. It could be a router, it could be a, a, a edge gateway, uh, it could be a sensors, all of these. So this is where you could actually have uh, green grass running on edge devices or a microcontroller unit running on free Atos. Then you have a cloud environment, which is AWS cloud. And then you also have enterprise tier where you have already have devices or CRMs and so on, which are event management system, which you need to integrate into. Uh, so the major common IoT platform migration scenarios I usually see from other customers are mixed devices. So the, these mixed devices are where uh, their platform has reached end of life and they basically need to bring in a new platform and bring it in by having a new devices connect to the new device, a new platform and old devices connecting to the new platform and migrating them over. So you have a single IoT platform. This is where we have a mixed bag of brownfield devices and greenfield devices. Then we also have some set of customers who are purely migrating brownfield devices before migrating, uh, before starting the journey of greenfield devices. This is where they switch over the firmware endpoints pointing to AWS IoT, and then they have a single linear uh, IoT platform. And then we have customers such as uh, Blue Air, who basically took an idea, envisaged the future, and developed all their new products starting from idea to the leveraging, to developing into and uh, deploying into, um, into the market and releasing to the end customer by using AWS IoT fully. And this is where we talk about next generation migration. So from a mixed devices enhanced perspective, um, we have customers who leverage AWS IoT come back and tell me that they're able to innovate based on a response of a uh, world uh, situation, whatever is happening. They were able to uh, innovate very quickly. They used to, they were able to have a rapid turnaround by leveraging the power of cloud by scaling the environment as much as they need it and scaling down when they don't need it and enhance the user applications rather than working on the infrastructure, setting up the infrastructure and deploying the infrastructure by using the AWS IoT clearly having the advantage. So they don't need to worry about infrastructure. All they could do is focus on the consumer uh, applications who basically give them enhanced capabilities and features which are required and based on the uh, the in the in the real world for their scenarios. Um, so I talked about uh, connectivity of wellness devices earlier. So one of the customer who I actually have seen who was talking about um, uh, connecting their isolated devices which are sitting in a protected network these devices needs to connect uh, within the environment so they they have actually used aws iot green cross where all the protected network connectivity devices could be an x-ray could be any health devices which are sitting in a hospital needs to go through aws iot green grass which basically helps them to normalize all the data and also gives them capability to have the telemetry within their environment and connecting to their own premise application. So for example, if somebody's coming from an X-ray and then they realize from using the capability of AWS IoT Greengrass, uh, which provides you ML inference to say, X-ray uh, component is basically on a verge of failure, okay? And then you could basically turn around and say, okay, well, you know, 
I need to immediately inform the on-premise application. So we can see here, AWS IoT Greengrass sends the application, sends the message across to on-premise application where operators are there. They realize that this machine is on the verge of failure. So this is predicting pre preventive uh, failure and predicting maintenance. So this portion will operators will come around and change the pod. So you have a zero town downtime in a envir hospital environment where uh, devices needs to be in a working order always because you never know what's around the corner. Um, and having this telemetry data normalize it, send it across to AWS IoT Cloud, you are able to understand the complete telemetry of these devices to say, um, if, for example, a consumer comes in and says, okay, you know, I basically had that x-ray done and they need to set up a, a, a recurring appointment, this is where the system can automatically make the connection, link it up with your backend environment to say, okay, you know, set it up, make the connection, and then custom, you can see on the right-hand side, customer support, and you also have connection with IoT events and Amazon Connect. This is the call will get triggered from a customer support to say, this uh, Consumer has an appointment tomorrow. Please make sure you inform them and make sure you, they bring uh, whatever the, they need to bring it in is, as part of their uh, inspection, uh, as part of their uh, checkup. Um, and then also by understanding the failures of the machines and congregating, uh, augmenting this with the usage of the devices, the, the end users, the technical support, and the data science engineers are able to identify is what is the lifespan of uh, sensors or devices where we have been using on a certain amount of scale, which is causing failure. So you could actually uh, understood the frequency of those devices failure and have the most uh, recurring failure devices or their components have it on a stock as part of availability of your support staff on site to be readily, readily be available to uh, uh, repair and have zero downtime. Now, Let's look at a brownfield migration scenario where uh, a lot of customers actually have a retrofit firmware in the past, and they basically have, so for example, a fridge which basically connects to um, uh, their microwave, uh, their oven, and other connected devices within the house. Um, and they realize that, okay, they need to migrate these brownfield devices. So what they would do is they will update the firmware by retrofitting them and having a single component which basically acts as a conduit for them to basically connect to AWS IoT. And it gives them the capability to have a step-by-step -step feature addition rather than a complete firmware uh, changeover. So for example, in a situation such as aircraft, aircraft usually have 30 plus years or sometimes even 40 plus year uh, lifespan. Um, so some of the customers I work with, they usually have an aircraft where they actually want to plug it in um, green grass, uh, augmenting that with free autos with the sensors, which is already in the plane, have uh, auto landing system or other systems sending the data to green grass. Now what happens if the, let's say for example, a plane lands, you basically take the data, you apply the telemetry and you take it to the AWS IoT core. Now, you actually have emergency support team, flight ops, you have an engine health management system team sitting on standby. Now, by the leveraging the power of uh, AWS IoT, you're able to identify that the plane has landed and you detect an anomaly within a certain part of the plane. I mean, we know how critical it is and how crucial it is to make sure aircrafts are in a 100% shape to make sure we avoid any disaster. Now, in this situation, when the plane lands, and if there's an anomaly is detected, which we can see in a pipeline where we have AWS IoT analytics, augmenting that with Amazon SageMaker, the machine learning will be able to identify you to say that we can detect that this there is a um, there is a measure of a failure could happen in the next, I don't know, the 300 miles flight. Right, and this gives your engine head management team, your emergency support team, and flight shop team uh, to make sure the parts is readily available. So this is where a third-party subscriber will automatically will receive the notification to say this part needs to be delivered uh, as soon as possible. Your flight ops team will take that, your support team will take that, and basically change the parts. So make sure before the plane takes off, you have a hundred percent condition of the plane without any. Um, without any disaster to occur.
And this is where we can make sure a, a plane, which is even a, a brownfield device, for example, in this case, a plane uh, could be 20 years old, 30 years old. But by putting in a AWS IoT green grass, we are able to obtain the data and apply machine learning on the cloud, take the machine learning inference from the cloud and apply it on the edge device, which in this case, uh, a green grass, which is sitting inside the plane, and then deduce all these predictive and preventive measures to make sure we have a, a safe and secure flight. Now, let's look at next generation devices innovation. So uh, such as likes of Blue Air, which are, who I've been working with uh, a few years now, um, where they basically took the idea, they came to me and they say, okay, well, we have this, our idea. We want to basically use our air purifier and we want to connect it. We want to make sure we can scale it globally. We don't have to worry about um, scalability issues. We don't have to worry about um, uh, our R&D issues, we don't have to worry about maintenance issues. We don't have to worry about making sure our firmware are secure. So completely relying on the power of AWS services and taking the highly valuable resources which they have to innovate the devices, innovate the products, innovate the feature sets for the customers to come on and start uh, consuming it. Um, this is where, uh, you know, the modular design, having a modular design of multitude of devices connecting into a single uh, fit as a next generation devices, they're able to have unconstrained hardware because the, as the time goes by, the device becomes smaller and smaller, and we are able to leverage the power of edge by applying machine learning inference at edge to make sure that we do an iterative enhancement without causing any disruption. So for example, uh, uh, I talked about earlier where we have a security management system. For example, in this case, if a, if a consumer is actually wearing a watch, as you can see on the left-hand side, he basically leaves the house, the connected door lock realizes that the consumer has left it. So it will automatically send the, the message to a connected flying security camera to say, if you see any detection within the house, whether it's inside or outside, you can basically um, notify the user. So you can see on the right-hand side, you have maintenance staff, you have um, security team, which are sitting on standby and monitoring on their uh, wall boards, dashboards, where any of this thing happens. So for example, you can also use that in a positive way. For example, if I have a friend who comes in and I basically send a message through my app or through my phone to uh, open the door lock. Now, when the machine realizes that this is a person who is a positive entity who basically is able to come and sit down without triggering the alarm. Now, because the power of machine learning applied at edge, they are able to basically detect and deduce that this person is not a threat to the home security. Now, if, if the other side, if somebody comes in and you have detected that the drone, that the connected flying security camera can go out and say, okay, I have detected this person. I don't see this person as one of the person which is authorized or I've seen a regular basis to the owner. I would have to basically detect it as an alarm and trigger it. This notification will go to the end security team who are monitoring it, uh, police, uh, to your mobile app, a call initiated, uh, email being sent, and an SMS being sent for you to notify, and immediately lockdown will happen in the house to make sure everything stays secure while police arrives. Um, so with that, I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Johan, and let's hear how they basically took an uh, envisage idea of a product right down from uh, on the sketch on the paper to product in the market within within a year. Johan, over to you. Thank you, Sayan. So let's um, start the session uh, right now with a small video about our heritage. Blue Air was founded on the firm belief that the freedom to breathe is a basic right. Over two decades ago, our Swedish founder wanted to ensure his children could breathe the same clean, fresh air inside their home as they did out in the pristine Swedish archipelago. He set out to make the world's best air purifier and to campaign for every child's right to breathe clean air. He invented the unique HEPA silent technology, a combination of electrostatic and a mechanical filtration that delivers more clean air with less noise and using less energy than a light bulb. Today, we continue to engineer our award-winning air purifiers in Sweden, designed to create the safest environment for children to develop and grow, while making the least impact on the environment. Trusted by governments, healthcare professionals and families, 
We improve the lives of millions of people around the world. We will never stop fighting for your freedom to breathe. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me now try to extend the introduction about Blue Air. Blue Air's purpose is to provide clean air for the next generation. This is the reason we exist and the reason why we continue to drive sustainable innovations within air purification. Today, air pollution uh, is one of the fifth largest factors for deaths around the world. On top of this, outdoor air pollution has grown by 8% the last five years. Since 1996, Blue Air has managed to improve the indoor air quality for millions of human beings around the world with the help of our air purifiers. A lot has happened over the last years, and since 2016, Blue Air is a proud member of the Unilever family of brands. We will now go into a section to talk a little bit more about what air pollution is. So uh, we spend about 90% of our time indoors where the air can be up to five times more polluted than, uh, than the outdoors. Uh, it's actually that uh, household air is one of the leading causes of disease and premature death. Nine out of 10 people in the world breathe air that exceeds World Health Organization's guidelines. As you probably can see from the slides, there is uh, different pollutants that you might be familiar with, uh, such as dust, pet dander, pollen, uh, but it's also so much more uh, particles and pollutions in the air. Uh, it is actually uh, particles that is so small, uh, we call them fine particle um, matters, and they are so small, so they are uh, 2.5 microns uh, small in diameter. And if you compare that uh, with the human hair, a human hair is around 70 microns big, so we're talking about uh, 7 to 30 times smaller than a human hair, and these are uh, in the, the air that we breathe. And um, uh, these harmful particles um, comes from uh, emissions of uh, emissions from combustions of gasoline, oils, diesel, or coal. Uh, besides that, uh, pollutions from the uh, from wildfires and traffic, all of these things are contributing um, to um, uh, to a polluted air. Um, our homes contains everything from dust, cook, uh, cooking fumes, uh, chemicals, which is released from paint, uh, could be from furniture, it could be from cleaning agents. Uh, and if we on top of that add that the outdoor air coming into your, uh, uh, into your home through the ventilation, um, you have a kind of a uh, a cocktail of uh, cocktail of toxins floating around in your home, um, and uh, clean air has uh, proven health benefits. It can provide you when, with asthma relief. It can provide you with allergy relief, uh, prevent from sickness from bacteria and viruses and so on, and. Uh, with that being said, uh, let's have a short video uh, that describes our latest innovation.
Great, welcome back. Uh, being a brand uh, that operates worldwide, uh, our, one of our top priorities is to ensure security and integrity of our consumers. Uh, with local and regional cyber, uh, cyber laws with, within the world, um, especially in Europe, US, China, Japan, Korea, I mean, the list just goes on on all of these uh, countries in the world that uh, want to protect uh, all of their citizens. So with this momentum in, in the world, we do see that rules are constantly changing and evolving. Um, and this was one of the key things for us to to be aware of when we designed the new uh, IoT platform. We wanted to, to make sure our, that our air purifiers had the ability to move seamless between regions. And the regions that we start off with could be expanded in the future as the um, uh, cyber security laws uh, are being enforced. Um, and um, in, in general, the, the idea was that the air purifier should have the ability to adopt and connect uh, to, an, um, to an existing re region or into a future one. So this was really the, the essence when we uh, started this, um, this journey. So let's uh, dig into how we did it. And uh, we will start off with a kind of a simplified uh, architecture of our ecosystem. Uh, so this is something that we have delivered uh, uh, together with Syed and, and his team. And uh, what it essentially is, is a, a framework for us where we have more than 50 different microservices on top of our platform um, that we host in multiple uh, AWS regions. Um, and some key components uh, that you might see is we have done it completely serverless uh, in a, mic a microservice manner. Uh, so we're talking about uh, DynamoDBs, we're talking about S3s, Lambdas, API Gateway, and so on, To just to mention a few of them. Uh, we have done this in a, as I said, in a microservice approach. So we could work in parallel with all of our teams to really make sure that we go from an idea to a product on market within a year. So that was really the, the essence and how we could develop uh, as we go and run a lot of initiatives uh, in, in parallel. Um, we will be zooming in a little bit on uh, two features today. Um, one being the, the firmware side and the edge side. And then um, the second one, is a little bit regarding uh, stream analytics and how we did that. So let's start off with the uh, firmware. So for us, uh, in order to get out the door as quick as we can, we were tight on time and we had to deliver on time. Uh, we looked into the architecture and understood we need to leverage what AWS have developed for us so we can focus on our business application layer. And for us, that does mean that we are leveraging the free Artos. Uh, we are using the device shadows uh, and we have successfully implemented IoT jobs. And on top of that, uh, we have then uh, applied our own uh, application layer or a business layer uh, to interact with uh, the, the sensors and actuators that an uh, air purifier consists of. And together with that, uh, we have done uh, what, what is called a configuration manager, where we can, can change the configuration of and behavior of the device without actually doing an uh, OTA. So for us, the, the business enablers here was 
we get uh, already developed communication protocols and an already um, working um, uh, prototypes and we can deliver on top of that and that's how we uh, achieve the uh, the goal of uh, from idea to production within a year. Uh, let's zoom in on the next piece, uh, which is with respect to the uh, streaming of uh, sensor data. And one of our key features, which a lot of uh, consumers are interested of, is to be reassured that the Blue Air product really works. So they want to see how the air purifier actually cleans the air. You can get an indication that the, the indoor air is not to satisfaction. Uh, you start it and you want to have the immediate feedback. Uh, so what we have developed is, uh, is a smart uh, functionality where the mobile app goes in and sub, uh, subscribes on an MQTT topic, sends that uh, uh, down to IoT Core, which understands that uh, this is a subscription. Uh, it will tell the air purifier to turn on, turn on the stream and to push data. It will tell in which frequency of the data uh, and um, it will follow a specific uh, uh, format. Uh, along with this, we also define which sensors that should be, uh, be uh, fed back, back to the, uh, the consumer. So we basically have an architecture where we can plug and play in, uh, in new sensors into our ecosystem. And as soon as the, the customer says, now I'm reassured, I don't want to see the data and closes the app. Um, the uh, the platform will automatically turn off the, the sensor data. Uh, so this is a really key thing for us. And we spent some time of how, how can we make a cost efficient streaming of data uh, along with the utilizing as few components as possible to get it out of the door as fast as possible. Okay. So for us, the outlook for, for future, uh, we would like to continue uh, deliver more serverless uh, microservices on top of the uh, IoT platform. Being a premium brand, we also have premium co consumers. They expect to have new features and fun functionalities uh, on, a, on a steady pace. So, this is something that we uh, really are focusing on and delivering according to. As you might understand, it is, uh, we're also following what's happening uh, worldwide when it comes to new um, security and compliance uh, regulations or cybersecurity laws and so on. So in the near future, uh, we would definitely scale up to a couple of new regions. Uh, which also has a great uh, um, great impact for the customer, which will reduce the, the latency in the communication and really give the the customer the premiumness. Besides that, um, we are fast followers of new AWS technologies. So whatever the AWS team are developing and coming up with, we have a um, a window um, once a quarter where we evaluate new new things that comes up and see how we can uh, ad adapt or our already core services uh, to streamline them more or get them more cost efficient or pre perform in a better way. So that is something that we'll continue be doing. And the last thing is with respect to mach machine learning on the edge. Uh, so we are looking into that and see how we can make the um, machine learning to improve all uh, our algorithms to uh, uh, to become even better of removing bacteria and viruses and introducing uh, new and better modes on the actual purifier. Um, 
with that being said, uh, I will leave the word over to you, uh, Sayed. So thank you very much. Thank you, Johan. That was a great insight and the journey, uh, how you actually were able to take the idea into production uh, and scale globally. So Blue Air, as one of the many customers of AWS and AWS IoT, uh, they're powered by AWS, um, reach out to us. We are always willing to help you out wherever we can um, to embark your journey on AWS IoT. Um, what next you, what, what, what's next you could do is we have uh, a Blue Air reInvent session last year where they also shared the journey uh, along with the marketing team, a product team from a Blue Air. Uh, you can also check out Blue Air uh, Connected Air Purifier Cases Study, uh, which is available as a blog. Um, and with that, I thank you very much for joining us and listening to us and understanding and you know absorbing uh, all the technical challenges, technical blockers, and the the way forward for you to adapt um, AWS and AWS IoT cloud services. Feel free to reach out to us uh, through LinkedIn and connect to us. Um, and with that, uh, from my side and Johan, thank you very much and have a great day wherever you are. Thank you.